Today we're gonna be talking about Zootopia. We're gonna be taking a deep dive into themes and meanings going on in this wonderful animated film. Zootopia. What's Zootopia about? Okay, so in this world you have animals and they have evolved. We have predator and prey. They live together in harmony. They have a society. Now within this world you have a character named Judy Hopps. She's your main character. She's a little bunny rabbit. She wants to be a police officer and move to the city so bad. Uh, and there's never been any other bunny police officers like ever. So she has to go through the police academy. She finally makes it. She's top of her class. She gets assigned to go to the city to Zootopia. And she gets there only to find that the other fellow police officers still don't take her seriously. She has to prove herself. She has all these obstacles to get through. And one of the obstacles is her police captain. And the captain gives her an impossible file, a missing person case. And he's like, you gotta solve this within 48 hours or you have to give me your badge and get out of here and resign. And she takes the case because she wants to prove to him she knows what's up. And she partners with this fox named Nick Wild. He's a little shady character. And together they figure out this case, but it stumbles into something way bigger than they even imagined. Way bigger than they ever imagined. Yes, with far reaching implications. Far reaching implications. It's kind of like Chinatown for kids. It's like, a, it's a detective story that, you know, has a lot of stuff going on. I'm so glad that I went to go see it. I saw some favorable things from some people online. So I was like, yes, let's go do this. And uh, I found myself really relating to the main character like a lot. And I already knew that I was going to from what I saw from the trailer. I had seen a trailer beforehand. Um, but I love the fact that she's a girl from the country who is like, I wanna go to the city and I'm gonna change things and I'm gonna do something. And her parents are kinda like, oh, why don't you just settle for less? As somebody who has infiltrated and worked in several male dominated industries, like that's exactly how it is um, when you, when, as a woman, when you go into one of these places and work somewhere with a bunch of guys. Um, but she also like did it right. And that's the thing that I loved about this is that she was a shining example of what you do when you infiltrate a male dominated industry and how you just have to prove yourself and be badass about it. And then all the dudes will respect you. Another thing I learned about Zootopia is how it portrays parents. There was this one scene at the very beginning where Judy's a little teeny bunny and she's like, I wanna be a police officer and change the world. And her parents are like, you know what? It's really great to have dreams, but just don't believe in them too much. You should settle, just settle. You know, and the mom's like, yeah, we settled hard. And I was just dying. I was dying laughing. It was so adorable. Uh, I also enjoyed the scene after her first day of work where she's kind of down in the dumps because things aren't the way she thought they were gonna be. She, like, people kind of treated her badly and she had to do meter maid stuff. She's like super bummed about it. Her parents call and they're like, how was your first day? And she has to lie to them and say like, oh, everybody was really nice and it was a lot of fun and whatever. Because if you tell your parents that you're actually having a hard time in your life and they start freaking out, which makes you feel worse about it. So then you have to lie to your parents about your life being better than it actually is, which is annoying. Cause like you want to talk to your parents about real things so they can like help you through them. But then they're not really gonna help at all. They're just gonna make it worse. Yeah, I went and saw this Onion article it said, 27 year old man lies about every aspect of life to keep parents from worrying. And I like laughed so hard. It's so true. Oh. And it's like, I get it. it comes from a really, like it comes from a place of love, like cause they want you to be happy and be doing well and all this stuff. Like I get it. But at the same time, it's like, you know, Adversity builds character, okay? So like, it's a good thing to have struggles in life sometimes. Like it, it makes you work harder. And it's like, why is the main objective for a parent is to have their kid never have a struggle in their life? You know, that's like, that's like raising a, a baby person. So I have so many man children probably, and women children, and just everyone's children in general. <laughs> I'm a real man. Parents are children too. Every, the whole human race are children. So minor spoilers, another thing that was really great about this movie was the character of Nick Wilde, the fox. I really loved his story arc where we find out that, you know, you see him as this con man now where he has these schemes, you know, and he's running these little schemes and stuff. 
but you find out that in the past he wanted to be a part of like a boy scout troop and the boy scout troop that he wanted to be a part of was made up of all like prey animals and so he gets like hazed by them because he's like a predator animal and he gives up on his dream and he never goes back he turns to a life of crime instead of learning about boy scout honors and values and things like that because he's like if that's how people look at me i might as well be the villain that people think that i am you know and that's true i mean it's like i get that where that comes from for real it's like you want to be bummed on me well let me give you something to be bummed about then and it's really great how nick wilde teams up with judy hops and how his street smarts combined with her law smarts like they're an unstoppable team you know because you need both and honestly like it's you know, cops and robbers, they're kind of like lovers. It's this really odd relationship between criminals and cops. And I also love that Judy Hopps not only gets help from this shady dude, Nick Wilde, but she also ends up getting help from Mr. Big. He like was cracking me up every scene he was in. Uh, and she also gets help from a, like a weasel guy that she busted earlier. And I love like seeing her, you know, getting help from shady people to do awesome things because you need shady people on your side sometimes. Again, working in the tattoo shop, I met a lot of shady people. I'm friends with a lot of shady people and they're pretty cool. They're just people too. It happens. You can learn a lot from shady people. <laughs> now we're gonna get into some real spoilers. So stop watching if you don't want to see them. What were your favorite scenes? The money scene is definitely the DMV that's like filled with sloths they're because anyone who's sloths? gone to a DMV knows the struggle is real out there it's like oh it was so funny like and i i feel like i'm a really fast person you know very fast and so dealing with like normal people or slower people to me just like drives me insane you know i'm just like ah speed up in my head all the time so i could totally relate to that whole scene it was a plus 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 also enjoyed the post credits shakira thing where everybody's dancing in the town Everything. yeah they all go to the concert and they have a good time that was fun that was a lot of fun although somebody Shakira. somebody on instagram was telling me that there was a post post credit scene that implies that wild and hops get together but i think that they're lying to me be you left? because i googled why it. didn't you late stay and watch it because i'm tired of staying to watch all the credits for every fucking movie Hey, this is a children's review. Okay, fine. Because I'm tired of staying for do all the credits for every flippin' movie. Flippin', there you go. <laughs> it's just a lot of credits, especially with animators, like a thing like this. Like, there's just so many animators. It just takes forever. And, like, nobody's reading those names. You couldn't wait to get through the animators? No. No! I had to go. <laughs> Bad news in this city gripped by fear. What can you tell us about the animals that went savage? Are we safe? This is priority one. So why is this work significant? Well, it's just chalk filled with positive messages that all work completely together and don't compete with one another. They all work, they're analogous, it's beautiful. You have, you know, Judy Hopps and her story of the country girl who wants to go to the city, also the girl who wants to work in the male dominated industry. So you have some gender things going on there. Uh, you also have the theme of like your parents telling you like not to do what you wanna do, but just like do whatever you wanna do and try everything. Okay, there's a big theme of trying everything and seeing what you're capable of and pushing yourself, which is really awesome. Then you also have, and this is a big one, prejudice. I mean, it really talks about prejudice through the predator and prey situation going on within the characters, within the society. I really love that. It also talks about the relationships between leaders and their people. And like, if you don't treat your people right, then like they are gonna turn against you. Another theme that's really important is about how people in power use fear mongering in order to manipulate the masses. And you know, you have the little, the little secretary chick and you find out that she's the mastermind behind every, this big conspiracy that's going on. And she says, fear always wins, you know? And that's the thing, like it's kind of true to be honest because that's what people use today. Every day, you know, I go on and look at all these commercials and a lot of them are just like fear mongering nonsense. Uh, and it's just trying to get you to get afraid so you'll do what whoever wants you to do. And on top of the fear mongering thing, I love that she uses prejudice to fearmonger with because that's something you see all the time it's like oh it's those people that are causing all the problems because it's really easy to you know create a scapegoat you know and it's like real problems are messy 
uh, and they don't necessarily have a clear answer all the time, but people, the masses, when you get a mass of people together, they become collectively dumber, so they need a simple answer, you know, because they can't understand complicated problems. So it's like, it's, it's a tough situation, it's a tough line to walk. And it's amazing to see a, a children's movie putting this message in, I love it. It's very healthy for our society. And at the very, very end of the movie, you have Judy where she's giving her speech to the new recruits of the police academy. And I loved what she said in there was, she said that change starts with you and me. You know, it starts with us. You can't change everybody at the same time. Society isn't all gonna change. We're all, one day we're all gonna wake up and do what we're supposed to be doing. That's not how it works. Individuals have to take personal responsibility for change, you know, don't worry about what other people are doing, just work on yourself and your own problems, you know, quit pointing the finger at other people and blaming other people for whatever. Handle your own business. So there, that's like the 20th great message that I found in this movie. <laughs> Shakira. The problem in this country is all the immigrant New Zealanders. We need to build a wall to keep all the dirty Kiwis out of this country and out of our oceans. Think about it. Do you really want dirty Kiwis swimming in the same oceans as your children? Vote for robot. I'll build a wall in the ocean. And the New Zealanders are gonna pay for it. today thanks for watching uh and yeah zootopia is a great all-around movie it is absolutely worth your time and money so go check it out you don't need to have a kid to go see this movie just need to have a heart i have a heart and no you don't and don't forget to subscribe to this channel like this video and follow me on twitter and instagram and all those sorts of fun things and don't forget, the Comic Book Girl 19 Weird Ass Calendar is now on sale for $16. So you can get yours on comicbookgirl19.com. This year we got shrink wrapping and it's got a little deal on the back. And we got a thicker cover as well as you can actually write on this paper way better because that's stuff we had last year like you could barely write on. But this stuff, we mark everything in here. It's too late to buy a calendar. It is not too late to buy a calendar because this calendar started in February of this year and goes through January of 2017, so you still have like 11 months to use it. Or like 11, what? 10 and a half maybe. Who starts a calendar in February? People who are late. <laughs> That's... People who were broke because Disney didn't pay them. People who did not have the capital because we didn't get paid on time, so we had to wait to print these. It's not my fault. It actually isn't my fault this time, which is surprising. I was ready. The problem in this country is all the dirty Eskimos. Vote for robot. I'll build a wall in Alaska. And the Eskimos are gonna pay for it. <laughs>